and welcome back to another review from the audio file man and this particular week i'm looking at a venerable old japanese company i'm looking at yamaha now a few years ago three or four or so i did a whole host of yamaha reviews they seem to come one after another there was a variety of different amplifiers there was a host of different speakers and there was even a blu-ray player reviewed from an audio perspective and then life happened and i moved on to other brands other manufacturers and i kind of lost touch with yamaha well now it's time to re-establish a connection because i've got back in touch with yamaha and the good people over at that fine company has sent me a large and i mean large i mean i had to scale the north face of this particular amplifier a large integrated amplifier it costs one pound short of two thousand pounds so we're not talking about what might commonly be seen as a more normal budget yamaha fur here this is two thousand pounds or so and it's called the a s 1200 as i say this integrated amplifier is pretty large it's also pretty heavy it offers a retro styling and most of all it features vu meters woohoo so on that note of ecstasy there's no better time than to do a closer look and welcome to the closer look section and as you can see in front of you there's a sheer face of aluminium with those two rather nifty VU meters. This amplifier offers 90 watts, that's 90 watts into eight ohms, and it certainly fills a space. I'm talking 435 millimeters by 157 by 463 millimeters, and it weighs in at 22 kilograms. So don't forget to bend those knees. Oh, and this amplifier tends to say, look at me. A lot now on this wall of aluminium there's a host of switches round knobs cheese slice knobs and we'll get to those in a second and more holes on the rear than lennon's blackburn lancashire inside is a meaty toroidal transformer film capacitors and internal shielding while the company says that the design utilizes a and i quote mechanical ground concept which begins with the bolts of the feet welded directly to the main chassis followed by the large heatsink power transformer and block capacitors directly bolted to that self same chassis through this design unwanted vibration is avoided achieving expressive groove in the music unquote now this box may dominate your hi-fi your room and quite possibly the streets you live in so bear that in mind if aesthetics are important the layout of this amplifier front and back is classic traditional and ever so slightly nostalgic the front fascia has a large volume knob as you can see here there's also a smaller source selector bass treble and tone controls are also included and as i say if you look at them at a slight angle they do resemble slices of cheese or am i just hungry now if all these tone controls are set to zero the audio will actually automatically bypass the tone control circuit there's also a speakers switch because you can hook up two sets of speakers to this one you'll also find a headphone socket for the built-in headphone amplifier this one is a full size model thank goodness at 6.35 millimeters next to the headphone socket is a meaty power switch this is definite certain and lovely and bulky on the far side and in a similar styling is a mute switch when you click this on you'll see the little light saying your amplifier is muted press it again and the light and the mute disappears to me because i have this vu fetish 
The one intriguing control is the meter option, and that allows you to turn off the VU meters entirely. You can also select a peak level monitoring option, or you can go into classic VU mode. There's also a dimmer to automatically change the brightness of the meter display, and you can lock the desired dimmed lighting too. The dimming option is very interesting and quite innovative. And as you can see here, when I enter into dimming mode, the lights cycle. They cycle in terms of intensity. They will begin at their brightest and then they will progressively dim. When they get to the bottom of that dimming cycle, they'll click back into very bright mode and then it will start all over again. What you need to do is you need to keep your fingers on that meter switch. When the VU meters hit a level of brightness you're happy with, you click off the dimming and that will lock in the intensity of the illumination. So to repeat, hit that dimming option, wait for the intensity you're happy with, and then move away from the dimming option and the illumination you've selected will stay in place. An intriguing way of doing things, I must say. The rear of the chassis provides two sets of speaker binding posts situated on the far left and the far right. As you can see here, they offer multiple options for spades and banana fittings, and they're very chunky, made out of brass, and of very high quality indeed. You'll also find a set of pre-outs, and these sockets will allow you to hook up a subwoofer if you care to attach one. You'll also find an auto power standby switch. This kicks in after eight hours. There's also a selection of trigger sockets. There are three sets of inputs, and just below that, there is the Phono amplifier, and you have the option to select moving magnet or moving coil. Next to that, there's a grounding grub screw. Adjacent to that lot, there's two pairs of line outputs where you can connect, for example, an old cassette deck, and there's the so-called main inputs too. Now these force the volume to operate in fixed mode, and this allows you to hook the sockets to a preamplifier, for example, or an AV amp. You also get an IEC power socket. You also get a slim multifunction remote. Multifunction because this particular remote works with other Yamaha products in the range. The remote has a 60 degree arc of fire and a six meter range. And you can see the remote in action here. Just check out the sleek moves from this volume knob. Pretty sexy, hey? So how does the Yamaha AS1200 sound? Let's move over to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. And welcome back to the sound quality tests. And before we talk about sound, I just want to talk about one feature we didn't get in the closer look section. A feature which is important for not being there. There is no internal DAC in this amplifier. None at all. Or Bluetooth or anything like that. This is just a straight integrated amplifier. So let's focus on the DAC, because that's normally a, a fixture in integrated amplifiers these days. What's going on? And I ask this because some of you may be rather disappointed that there's not a DAC involved in this box. And let's not forget, this is Yamaha we're talking about here, one of the most enthusiastic bundlers in existence. Yamaha normally loves just to stuff as many items and features as it can into any one available chassis. You want an amp? Sure, have a DAC in there too, why don't you? And Bluetooth, and streaming, and a CD player, and dab radio, and multi-room options, and well, so it goes on and on. Now I understand why people like to see DACs included in amplifiers. There's this perceived value. It's seen as a freebie. There's also no setup involved. The DAC is inside the case. It's ready to go. And that also means you're saving money on not having to buy extra 
cabling. There's also the fact that footprint is a lot smaller. That is, you don't have to cater for an external DAX chassis. And if your hi-fi has to cope with a small area, footprint can be an important issue. So the case for an internal DAC is a pretty strong one. On the other side of the coin, the case for not having an internal DAC, well, that's pretty strong as well, I would say. An internal DAC sits cheek by jowl with all the other parts within an integrated amplifier, which means that it sends out and receives high frequency noise and vibration from all those nearby components, which doesn't do much good for sound quality. It actually veils some of the delicate and fragile elements of your sound because it sits in that cramped space. Don't forget also, when you have an internal DAC, the DAC is subservient to the build budget. So if you're building an amplifier, which is the star of the show, you've got a pot of cash. It's finite. There ain't no more. You're given this money and that's it. So you've got to build yourself an amp and if there's any money left over, well, that can go to the DAC. The DAC is a lower priority. So it suffers in terms of parts quality, which means sound quality will suffer as well because the DAC is really just a a guest star in this particular movie. It's not the star of the show. The amplifier is the star of the show. And then there's those cramped conditions I mentioned earlier. You've only got so much space in any one amplifier. So you've got to squeeze in as many bits of the DAC as you possibly can. Now, this might mean that a more superior set of components are just too bulky and can't fit in there. So you might have to have smaller components which don't sound as good, smaller, cheaper maybe, and again, sound quality may very well suffer. So the fact that there is no DAC in this chassis or Bluetooth or DAB radio or FM or any of those things tells me one thing. Yamaha is single-minded in this product. It's got its eye on the prize and it's trying to do one thing and one thing well. So how does this amplifier sound? I began with vinyl and spanned the ED Gourmet Spanish language album, and excuse my pronunciation, I think it's called Cuatro Vidas. It's on CBS, backed by the El Trio Los Panchos. Again, I hope that I've said that correctly, apologies if not. And I chose the track Vereda Tropical, full of romance, yearning, understated backing vocals, low-key percussion and acoustic guitars. Meanwhile, Gourmet herself had a purity in the high registers, but a sort of husky delivery around the lower frequencies. Frankly, this song is absolutely gorgeous. It's also full of fragility, so needs careful handling. And using this vinyl, I did a brief test of the internal phono amplifier using the moving magnet option. It's okay, it's, it's fine. Uh, not amazing. I wouldn't say the mid-range insight was anything to have a party about, but it's it's good as a starter. It's good to get you going and it's good if your budget has been spent on this amplifier and you've got nothing left. It's your first upgrade though. So instead I plugged in my reference phono amplifier just so I can get to the meat and review the Yamaha amplifier on its own. And my first impressions of this amplifier? Intriguing. There's a definite plan here. You can feel there's a direction from Yamaha. Yamaha have certainly got a, a theme in mind with this amplifier. It's almost as if Yamaha is saying, we're going to do it this way as opposed to that way. So what you don't get, or let me put it another way, what there is less of in this presentation is air and space. Saying that, the soundstage is not claustrophobic, but there are plenty of amplifiers out there at this price point that infuse the soundstage with more air for detail to move around within. And the Yamaha has less of that, I would say. Now, some of you might right now say, mm, that's not for me, but I think that could be a mistake. That's because the AS1200 offers a trade-off. Instead of the air and the space that some amplifiers might give you in buckets, the Yamaha provides a host of focus. More focus that you might normally expect to hear. In fact, 
It can produce a slightly tense mid-range, but that's never a major issue. It's a subtle effect as opposed to a hurdle to cross. The focus is the thing here, and because it has so much focus, that focus can create space all on its own. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, imagine you're standing in a small room. Standing in that small room, you inherently lose space to move around. It's a physical fact. You could feel a little cramped. But look again at the interior design of this room, the choice of furniture, how that's been arranged, the furnishings, the use of colour, and the sympathetic way the room operates. So, so it's possible to stand in a small room, but never really feel cramped or restricted, comfortable, but not confined. That's what the Yamaha does with sound. The upshot is the lack of air and space is not as important as it possibly should be. Now, there are several consequences to this effect. To make sure that space is maximised, the placement of instruments and vocals across the soundstage has to be exact. So it almost felt like some of the producers were saying, well, bass guitarist, you stand there. Uh, drummer, you sit exactly there. Uh, lead guitarist, there. No, no, not two inches to the left. There. So each element of the soundstage was arranged almost to a plan. The spin-off is that the bass, for example, never sounded pleasantly fuzzy or irritatingly bloomy. There was a strict discipline to the bass presentation. That goes for upper frequencies as well. So when an acoustic guitar string was plucked, there was a real ting effect, for example. This enhanced the accuracy of the instrument. Similarly, vocals increased the quality of the diction. Now, this does mean that music from the Yamaha tends to sing at a tension because space is not that abundant, as I say. The sense of relaxation and ease isn't really there via the Yamaha. The Yamaha expresses this track with a, a flourish and a precision, like playing a set of castanets instead of a lazy guitar strum. Upper mids and treble are never bright or forward, yet they are direct and controlled. Although there may be a slight reduction in emotion and heart, you can't fault the 1200 for its sense of accuracy. And I'm sure this effect will be appreciated by fans of classical and also jazz. At this point, I decided to change formats and went to CD. I chose the 2008 Edsel CD box set, enduring the blockheads, the stiff singles, the promo videos, and peel session. And I selected that venerable hit single, Hit Me With Your Rhythm Stick. Again, there was the reduction in soundstage space, but also, again, the Yamaha created its own space and lessened the effect. In general mastering terms, this particular recording was inherently a little forward around the upper mids. The Yamaha 1200 made sure you knew about it as well. It wasn't going to sugarcoat anything. It never tried to hide the fact. Hence, for example, if you played a piece of music and that music itself in mastering terms was quite forward, say it was getting towards being bright. This is the music itself, okay? If you played that piece of music, the Yamaha would give it a push just to tip it over the edge so it would sound even more bright. What I mean by that is, it's not forgiving. Never walk along a cliff edge with a Yamaha amplifier, and if you do, walk on the inside. Just a tip there. Yes, there was plenty of detail on offer here. Bass was a little lean, but full of impact, while the sound moved at quite a pace. The sound itself never dragged or felt sluggish. What I really liked about the overall presentation of the 1200 was its ability to dig out even the most subtle of detail. For example, I never realised just how amazing the bass line on this track was. It was quite a revelation. The bass guitar was very easy to follow via the Yamaha, and I could say the same about just about every other instrument on the soundstage. The piano was another highlight that was wholly accessible by the ear through the Yamaha. I then tried a little bit of vocal jazz by Carol K. 
Kid. This is the Dreamsville album on Lynn Records. On this CD, you could hear the exacting nature of the presentation from the Yamaha, but at the same time, no detail was excluded here. That included the delicate cymbal taps. A cool air surrounded this album, but all of the sonic ingredients were featured within. Nothing was excluded. Nothing was ever left out. Now, listening to the same album with the built-in headphone amplifier, I used a pair of Sennheiser HD 660S's on this particular test. I noted that the sonic personality didn't change. Now, this is fairly rare for headphone amplifiers of this price point and lower. Normally, when I test built-in headphone amplifiers, the sonic personality alters a touch. You're hearing the headphone amplifier. You're not hearing the host main amplifier. Not so in this case. The headphone amp sounded exactly like the main amplifier. So you had lean yet strong bass, focused mids, and accurate vocal delivery. So how do I conclude the review for the Yamaha AS1200? Well, this amplifier is probably the most intriguing Yamaha amplifier I've ever reviewed. It's also the first that really tries to come to grips with sound in an audiophile manner. How it approaches sound is incredibly intriguing, mainly because of the sonic decisions the company has made for it. It might not be for everyone, but this amplifier will, I'm sure, gain many friends. More than anything, what I like about this amplifier is that it offers a sonic choice. Yamaha recognizes that we're all looking for different things in our music. We're all looking for different things in our hi-fi. There is room for all in music and room for all in hi-fi. And this Yamaha amplifier thoroughly supports that. You know, I can imagine that this particular Yamaha amplifier will generate a passionate following. I actually wonder if this will become a sort of cult favourite in the future. This is an amplifier to definitely keep an eye on and want to demo. And that's me done. Thank you very much for sticking with me to the end of this review. I appreciate your support and thank you also for clicking on the like and also the subscribe buttons. And if you haven't done that before, please do so now, if you don't mind, if that's all right with you, if you have the time. What I'm going to do below is put a host of other links, other reviews of Yamaha kit that I've done on my website. You might want to check those out if you're in a Yamaha mood. Also look below for my Patreon link. It features some exclusive editorial on there. There's also links to other social media platforms I'm on. And if you want to join my Facebook group, you're very welcome. It's heavily moderated, so there's no trolls. It's a safe place to ask questions, ideal for beginners. There are lots of group members who will more than gladly offer their help and expertise. Now I'll be back next week with another video and I hope to have your company at that time. Until that time, bye bye for now.